with Heather Murdoch. Good morning and welcome to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch and I'm so grateful to be with you today. Oh, what a delight this day is. It's beautiful outside. And um, I was driving in this morning, I was sharing with my friend here that um, as I drove in this morning, I just, you know, the, the greenery and the lushness and I know the drought, um, we still, we're still we still in a drought right now, but just the greenery that has just, um, just blossomed so quickly. And as I was driving down the road this morning on these windy roads and um, just, you know, the sun coming through the, through the trees and I came upon a part of the road that was just so lush and green and there was like a canopy of greenery over the road and it was so radiant and um, there was so much, uh, the sun filtering through and I was just so captivated by God's love and um, I don't know if you've ever experienced that just in, just in nature experienced um, the love of God and, and his creation is so absolutely be beautiful and I just want to thank you God for, for what you've created for us to enjoy which leads me to my thought for the day and um, right now I'm reading in Thessalonians and uh, Thessalonians is a great book I'm reading in first Thess Thessalonians about how you know, how to live moral lives and um, really talking about the holiness God calls us to live holy lives and um, I was reminded this morning that, um, you know, there are so many times where I'm working on areas of my life. I'm working on my on my walk with the Lord. I'm working on my holiness. I'm working on my joy. I'm working on my on my um, character. And those things are important. It's important to work on things, I think, because it teaches us discipline and commitment. But I think if we focus on those things as our goal, we're focusing on the wrong things. What I'm really reminded of this morning, um, as I read in John, um, those who obey me, uh, those who love me will obey my commands, is what he says in John 14. And I'm really reminded that we really got to focus on our intimacy and intimacy is the key to everything when we're in God's love and we're, when we're loving him with our whole heart and allowing him to love us fully in his perfect love we then will obey we then will be holy we then will be righteous in him we then will be um we then will be obedient and uh, that joy and that peace will just flow from that place of love and it's all about God's love and I just really encourage you today to focus on God's love and all those other things will come into place that is the key that should be our goal his love is our goal and um, and and it's just such a it, it's just so awesome that we can serve and love a God who loves us so much who um, who can set us free through his love and um, who who wants to transform our lives and Jesus is the key and um, through him all things are possible and um, no matter where you've been there's hope and that hope is in Jesus and that's what I really hope that you get from this show is is the show is really about the opportunity to share the love of, of Christ and um, so on that note I want to I want to introduce my friend Steve Pepper here hi Steve hi Heather it's nice good to, to have you, you. yes and some nice of you to be here. yes and some of the viewers may remember you have been on before yeah. and uh, that was I think about six months ago yeah and uh, I actually wanted to have your wife on, Robin. So we'll give a little shout out to Robin Pepper. <laughs> Hi, babe. <laughs> yes, and uh, Robin, she actually has a counseling service now, doesn't she? Yeah. A counseling practice, I yeah. should say. What's it called? It was, she, it was, she actually works for Hope, Hope Counseling. And, yeah. Uh, she's in the final stages of her practicum, okay. which is kind of like internship for a doctor type thing. Yes. So she's actually counseling and been counseling for months and months and months. I'm so proud of her. I really wanted to have you, her on or have you guys both on together because I know she, you're both ministry leaders also for yeah. Celebrate Recovery yes. and in Sacramento, which church? Real Life Church. Real Life Church. In Natomas. In Natomas. And, and we and just started another Celebrate Recovery at our other campus at the Artisan Campus on Del Paso, which is in Sacramento as Del well. Del Paso. So that's really kind of in the heart. That's the heart of... Uh, Brokenness. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Nice way to put it. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. We're yeah. going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but as I said, I wanted to have you guys on, and I wanted to have her on with you because she has such a heart. Both of you have such a heart for hurting people. Yes. And that's really kind of what Celebrate Recovery is all about, too. Yeah. So um, last time you were on here, you shared your testimony yeah. and how God's used Celebrate Recovery to change you. And to love you, yeah. <laughs> and so share a little bit, a little Steve, bit. of your story again. Uh, it, well, if it wasn't for Celebrate Recovery, you know, I, I wouldn't. I don't know where I'd be. I, I'd probably be dead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, it for me, uh, I grew up not believing in, in God. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the oldest of five boys. My dad was an atheist. Uh, we went to church. My mother tried to take us to church on Easter and, and Christmas, and really didn't make a lot of sense to, to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up, my dad 
told us the Bible was just a bunch of stories, fiction. Right. Mm -hmm. So I never really uh, believed in, I never believed in God until way late in life. So I tried living life my way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got married at an early age, 19, and to my high school sweetheart, and got divorced 10 years later, you know, drug use, alcohol abuse, and, and uh, emotional abuse all mm -hmm. throughout, you know, that relationship. And, uh, went into another relationship almost immediately, got married again, second time. Uh, not married very long that time, two years. Uh, it was during that time, though, that I, I had changed careers and I, I became a stockbroker, so I had, I had all the money I needed at the time. So I was pretty wealthy. I, I did degree, uh, attain a degree of wealth during that period. But that wasn't the answer. Uh, we got into another relationship, so my pattern was relationship, relationship, mm -hmm, relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, uh, I needed to be with somebody. I, I just, I, I just couldn't, I did like being alone. So my identity was based in other people more, right. more than anything else. Codependency. Codependency, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was a flaming codependent. So, uh, through celebrate recovery you know i got to s discover all these things and and see what was really going on why i i had such a rough life and a crazy life mm -hmm. uh, is it fair yeah. to say that you were addicted to love and looking for yeah. love in all the wrong places yeah, that's a good way to put it. yeah right. i'm a hopeless romantic uh -huh. and you know uh -huh. and I, I was always wanting this you know this happy ending mm -hmm. and the endings kept getting worse yes worse mm -hmm. and worse mm -hmm. you know after five long-term live together relationships you know t you see two marriages three long-term live together relationships i mean i was done mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. with women and, and relationships because i'd been beat up so much mm -hmm. and really at the time i was blaming them right of course but uh yeah. you know knowing now you know i mean i had a big part to play in all of it yeah so yeah. Uh, and so was it through Celebrate Recovery that, you're, that you were able to get clean from your drug addiction, or did you get clean before that? Before no, it, it, it was, uh, well, uh, it was through Celebrate Recovery that, that I got clean. Uh, I was locked up. I got, I got arrested many times for do all kinds of stuff, but the last time I got locked up, uh, I, uh, you, you kind of get forced to get clean when you're locked up. But once I got out, I started going immediately to Celebrate Recovery. And who told you about this program? Because there's so many other programs like AA and all those different... Well, what happened was when I was locked up, that's, w that's where I came to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a... After a few months, my head cleared up enough to where I could kind of think about my life and yeah. how did I get here? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. And uh, so... I came to the Lord inside there yeah. while I was locked up, and so once I got out, it, it, was, na it was a natural thing for me to want to get to know the Lord. I wanted to get to lo know this God that had saved me, basically. Yes. And Celebrate Recovery, I heard, was a Christ-centered ministry, and it was my daughter who had told me about it. Mm. And so when I, she came and picked me up because I had no place to go, because when I got locked up, I was homeless and yeah. all this other stuff. And... Uh, so she took me to her church, and there was a Celebrate Recovery there. And I started going there, as well as doing AA and NA. Because mm -hmm. at the time, I, they required me to do three meetings a week. And Celebrate Recovery was one of those meetings. Uh, and uh, from there, just... Uh, I stayed clean by going to Celebrate Recovery for about a year, and then I got into one of their 12-step um, you know, step studies. Mm -hmm. And that's where the light bulb moments really happened for me. I knew that I had stayed clean for about a year before I started that step study, but I knew I had problems. I just didn't know what they were, though. Mm -hmm. So I needed some help in identifying, yes. why was I this? Why did I do that? Yes. And it was through the step study that I discovered, you know, that I wasn't perfect, that I had <laughs> character flaws. Character defects, Character yes. defects. And so just for viewers who maybe don't, aren't not familiar with the step study, the step study is where you go through the 12 steps. Usually it takes about a year, depending yeah. on the size of the group. Mm -hmm. It's men together and then women together. We don't mix genders. Right, in gender recovery. specific. Right, and you go through each step, and there's questions that go with each step to help you peel back those onion layers. That's right, yeah. you, and, and that's exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. You peel back the layers of your life. You take yes. a hard look at your life as far yes. back as you can remember through, through, through present 
day. Mm -hmm. And uh, by doing that, you see patterns in your life. Yes. And you begin to see, you know, your part in various conflicts and relationships yes. that you've had throughout your life. And, yes. And, and you discover character defects is mm -hmm. the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. and, and with God's help, we can remove those and replace them with, with godly character. And let's give us, give us a couple of examples of character defects. Um, well, pride, yeah. selfishness. Anger. Uh, anger. Uh, jealousy. Jealousy, yeah, all those kind of things, you know. Uh, I, was, I was very controlling, mm -hmm. very manipulative, uh, very uh, prideful. Yeah. My identity was based in making a woman happy rather than worrying about myself. Right. So it, it, it yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot. And I want to talk when we come back, we're going to go to break, but I want to talk about um, the character defects, defects and sin and how those two are related. Because mm. I know we know in Celebrate Recovery, you got to pull it out by the root. Yes, you got yeah. to get to the root. So we'll talk about that. So okay. stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. And I'm here with my friend, ministry leader of Celebrate Recovery, Steve Pepper. Are you also a pastor now? Yes. Yes, so you're a pastor and ministry leader. I know you have a passion for broken people, for yes. helping people to um, be, not stay broken. You have a passion for bringing people um, the love of Christ and transforming them into mm -hmm. the image of Christ. Exactly. That's, that's what it's all goal. about. That's the goal. That's what, because God meets us where we are at, but he does not leave us there. That's right. And he uses people like us that, um, you know, to bring his message of hope and his principles of healing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So before we went to break, we talked about, um, you were talking about your character defects. Yes. And talking about, can you explain the connection between sin and character defects? Well, character defects are, are character traits that we have that, are not that are sinful mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. they they cause us to do sinful things yes yes and we we it's important to discover those character defects so we can grow and mature in our faith and become happier healthier whole people and like you said like the image of christ the image of christ because yes, that's that's the, that's the mm -hmm. ultimate goal mm -hmm. And it is a process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, f from for me, I, I discovered my character defects way late in life. Yes. The so sooner someone can get a handle on that, the better off they're going to be. Absolutely. Uh, the idea with these twelve steps is to discover those character defects through patterns that we end up seeing in our lives. We see behavioral traits that we have, and and removing them. In other words, getting rid of them with God's help, you know, all things are possible, so God can help us remove them and replace them with godly character. That's right. In, in its place. And that's, and that's the key. That's the key to it right there, because yes. if you do that, then you're growing, you're maturing, you're mm -hmm. getting better, you're getting healthier. But you know, I'm talking about, you know, trying to break a bad habit as an example, you know, yeah, some people can just break it, uh, go cold turkey and break a habit for sure. But typically, the way that you that you break a habit is by replacing it with a good habit. Exactly. You've got to replace it. And, and after and a certain amount of time, yes. once you've done that, you've mm -hmm. actually replaced it. It takes a little time for the yeah. habit to mm -hmm. get Get mm -hmm. replaced with a good healthy habit. Yes, exactly. Twenty or thirty days or something like yes, that. There's uh -huh. a number that's in there. That, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. But it can be done, and with God's help and rely and having accountability and, and and a sponsor, someone helping you through this process, you can have some amazing healing. And I, I and I know you have countless stories, as do I, of just walking transformations. I mean, I can yeah. think right now of so many women that I've been through step studies with, that they they came in. One woman in particular, she came in, her head down totally shoulders rounded, literally just broken, yeah. literally no hope, literally at the end of herself, literally just um, just devastated mm -hmm. at the choices of her own life. And after going through the step study, surrendering to God, you know, fully uh, just making herself totally um, available to him and his work in her life she's like a walking miracle yeah I mean she looks different she is different it's just so yeah. amazing I know you have stories like that yeah it's it is amazing with me it's the guys you know they come in there it's their last ditch effort their wife says you know you got to do something yes. I'm leaving you yes. and you got to stop this mm -hmm. and, uh, and and then to watch them come in 
thinking, okay, I'm here, <laughs> see what this is all about, and then watching them transform and change mm -hmm. through the process, mm -hmm. it's just miraculous. It is. It's just really And I think you said something so key earlier, because off camera we're talking, we're going to talk a little bit about your prison ministry next, but um, you were sharing that when you go into the jails, you feel so, you're more blessed than they are. Yes. And I feel like that through CR. I mean, yes. these people, like, I feel like, thank you, Jesus, for letting me be a part of this. Yes. For being a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for witnessing this. Exactly. Yeah. For being a part of it. And yes. Knowing that God is using you yes. to, to, for these people to see what they need to see in yes. their life. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, I just feel so blessed when I know God's using me like that because yes. it's like, wow, Lord. That's you, true joy. You had a purpose for me, and then now I see it clearly. Exactly, exactly. So you've been uh, a ministry leader for how long now with Silbert Recovery? Oh, let's see. I've been a ministry leader for about three years, I guess, now. Okay, good. Yeah. And then, and then when, did God, when did God call you into the jail ministries? We started going into the jails uh, about a year ago, almost, yeah, almost exactly a year ago. Um, it came about in a real interesting way from somebody else. I had, a guy called me and said, hey, you know, we want to take CR into the, into the jails. Are you interested in being a part of it? And I, I said, no, you know, at, at the time I was real busy and mm -hmm. I was finishing up my BA degree. And I, I thought, no, no. But then a few months went by mm -hmm. and I felt the Lord telling me, you know what, you need to get involved in that. You need to call this guy back up and, uh, and say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm ready, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. So that's how I got involved, and uh, and we've been ministering down there at uh, RCCC, which is Rio Consumnes Correctional Center in Elk Grove, and we just started the main jail last night. Amen. And my wife is, is ministering down at RCCC on, let's see, Wednesday, uh, Thursday nights. We're doing the men on Wednesday nights mm -hmm. at our Triple C, mm -hmm. and last night we started the men and women on Tuesday night at the main jail. And tell Sacramento. us about tell us what happened last night. Uh, it was just uh, God just moved. Uh, they they were they've been being told that we're going to bring CR in there, so they were kind of expecting it and anticipating of mm -hmm. it. So they came with real high you know anticipation of, of what we had to say, and uh, we. They have everything segregated down there, so it's a little different than out at the ranch. So we don't have access to as many men or women at the same time as we do down there. Mm -hmm. But we got 25 guys showed up for, for the guys, and I think 22 women showed up for the women. And it, I shared a little bit of my story. Uh, one of my other team members shared a little bit of his story. And... Uh, you know, we had guys just really having some breakthroughs in there. A guy broke down crying. Uh, um, and it, at the end of it all, um, I did an altar call expecting maybe a few people and, and you know, 15 first-time mm. salvations. Mm. And then all the rest of them said, I want to recommit. Oh, my God. You know, so that, that was 10 more. So, you know, it, that, that's how the, the meeting ended. Mm -hmm. And that's what really blew me away. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw stuff happening throughout, mm -hmm. but the ending was just, wow, really, Lord, thank you, God. And talk about being used, and, you know, and I don't want anyone to think, because I know I have a testimony, you have a testimony, I know yours is particularly kind of extreme, uh, the things that you went through, and I don't want people to think they have to have a testimony like that to be effective. Oh, no. Because, I mean, I know both of us, just, we are grateful for what God, how He's used that brokenness yes. in our lives, but I just, I'm so also amazed by people who just lived a life of pleasing God their whole life, you know? Yeah. Yes. But when God can take something like what you've been through and yeah. use it to to touch 15 new hearts for Christ, yeah. it's just, you fall on your knees in gratitude. You must. You know, you know? And, and every week we'll probably have stuff like that going. I don't know about quite as dramatic as last night. But, yeah. But uh, because they're so hungry and they got nothing else to do but read the Word and, yes. and, and, get in, and get into, you know, try and figure out how to get out of their mess. And we're giving them a way now to to get connected when they do get out, to yes. CRs around the whole area. Yes, amen. And uh, get them plugged in so they can work the 12 steps, go to the large group meetings and open share groups and, and just get healing. And one of the great things that I love about the 12 step programs is it really teaches accountability. Absolutely. And we all need accountability. Accountability yes. is in the Bible, it's biblical, you know, yes. and, and we all need that. And um, I don't know if all Christians do have mentors or accountability partners. I mean, I, I know a lot of my friends do in, in our church. You know, we, we all should. We all should, exactly. And that's yeah. what I love about are especially for people that are in jail and things like that because as we know it's so easy for someone to get right back into their old ways when they get out of jail. That's right. And so CR really gives the tools.
tools, practical tools, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. But that's another thing we do. We we leave them with uh, all the different ministries in the whole area, all the contact information. Yeah. We gave them a little planner last night. Great. So they, as soon as they get out, they have a phone number, they have a contact person that they can call. A lot of people took my personal cell phone number down uh, last night because they said, "Oh, I'm getting out. I want to come where you're at." You know. Yeah. So it was really that's how intense it was last night. How I, how much, how hungry they are mm -hmm. to want to get healing and get better. It reminds me of like when a missionary goes into a different country like uh -huh. Africa or, or whatever it may be and you know I, I haven't been yet but I you know you see pictures and things or, or videos of, of the of people in different countries, third world countries yeah. and the absolute joy that they have and the hunger that they have for the word is kind of similar isn't it because when you have yeah. nothing else and I think that's part of what's a pro a, yeah. can be a problem for us in America we have yeah. so much yes. you know and so sometimes we don't make God a priority because we, we put our hope in other things. Yes. In jail, they don't have anything else. That's a, that's a, that's that's where God does some powerful things in those jails mm -hmm. because of that right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like being in Africa. They don't have anything else yes. except the Lord. Yeah. So they have that kind of faith that they can believe and trust in God and God comes through for them. Amen. Amen. And, and Robin's leading the ladies, right? She's leading the yeah. ladies. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. sure she had similar experiences. Yeah. She, yeah. she had some similar. I'm not exactly sure what happened with her. We didn't get to debrief too much last night. Yeah. But, yeah. but she said it, it was a powerful experience what, what they had going on. Breakthroughs and uh, women crying and uh, so it's a powerful ministry especially taking it inside like that yes um, so grateful that you're doing that yeah. I'd love to be part of that someday you know I'm totally I told God I'm totally open to to leading me into the jails for him to lead me there I'm I have I would love to be a part of that I can you hook know. you up yeah I know you can we'll talk about that <laughs> I can yeah, hook you up. yeah yeah um one of the things that Rick Warren says, and for the viewers who don't know, Rick Warren is the you know pa America's pastor, America's but he's pastor. he's the pastor at Saddleback Church where CR was started, Celebrate right. Recovery was started, and and he talks about how Celebrate Recovery is a leadership factory. Yes. Can you comment on that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's that's why the churches really like having a CR in in their church because it creates leaders. Yes. Because what it really does when you go through one of these twelve steps, you. It's a discipleship. Yes. So you become closer to the Lord. You develop that personal relationship that we need yes. with Jesus Christ. You become, you transform. Yes. You, you mature in your faith. And that's where the leaders come from. Yes. Amen. From the, graduating from those 12-step studies. It's, it is a leadership factor. He, I think he said that out of all of his ministries in his church, See, celebrate recovery produces the most leaders. Yeah. And not that they necessarily stay in celebrate recovery. They, you know, because no, I know they move out and they yeah. move on into yeah. the church into yeah. leadership roles. Exactly. Well, some of them stay and see and celebrate recovery and become leaders within the ministry. And some of them go into the church and and become leaders in other ministries in the church. And I love that about celebrate recovery because yes, it is a recovery program, how, and that's one part of it. However, the second part of it is to bring people through the program into the body of Christ yes. to be who they're called to be. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's the part that most people don't see. Yeah. They hear that word recovery, and there's a stigma attached yes. to that word, mm -hmm. and they're thinking, oh, well, that's not for me, and what, I'm not going to get anything. I don't need that. That's for those people. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they're those people. Mm -hmm, they just mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's a... Uh, I think it's one of the best... I mean, churches have their, dis their discipleship ministries and programs, but... I haven't been around all that many churches, but what I've seen, Celebrate Recovery does as good a job as anything mm -hmm. at, at discipling people, especially yes. if they're in the 12 step. Yes. And they're being mentored mm -hmm. by a sponsor. Mm -hmm. They've got accountability. They're in the Bible every day, in the Word. Yes. We get we're all this homework that we assign them through the step study. You know, then we're making disciples. Exactly. And that's exactly. what we're commanded that's to do, right? That's right. We are. Thank you so much for that, Steve. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith, and I'm here. I hope you've been enjoying my interview with Steve Pepper, ministry leader for Celebrate Recovery and pastor. And you're actually getting your master's degree, aren't you, right now? Yes, yes. I am. In, in what? In Christian leadership <clears throat> with an emphasis in coaching. Good, good. I want to talk to you more about that uh, in a little bit later. But first of all, I want to ask you one of my favorite questions to ask people because I get so many different answers. <clears throat> Pardon me. Is who is Jesus? He's love. Mm -hmm. He's God. He's my friend. I have a personal relationship with him. He's my savior. 
he's my all in all. Mm. Love it. Without him, I am nothing. Mm. Amen. He, I need him. Mm -hmm. That's who Jesus is to me, my savior, my hero. Mm. I love that, Steve, because you know what? In our culture, and you know, not just our culture, but particularly our culture, we put so much hope in um, in people, in celebrities, mm. in politicians. Yeah. Our heroes, our movie heroes, John Wayne. Yeah. You know, I love John Wayne myself. But you know, what I'm saying, I love that you said hero. Can you ex expand on that more? Well, he, he I'm nothing without him, mm -hmm. and none of us are. We just some of us don't know that. And so for me, it's like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here where I am today. I wouldn't be at peace for the first time in my life. And, and there's no, he's the truth, the way, and the life. Mm -hmm. And there's just no way around that, that without him, I know the truth now. And, and I'm learning the way mm -hmm. to live the life. Yes, okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just, I'm just hungry for more of that and to continue down that path. And for what he did for me and for everybody else, the sacrifice, how can he not be my hero? Mm -hmm. yes. There's no greater love than that. Mm -hmm. To lay down your life to lay for down your life yeah. for, mm -hmm. it's for someone that's sinning, mm -hmm. that's not in relationship with God, with you and with God, to do that. And I love that that's from Romans when he talks about while we were still sinning, he while died for us. While we were us. still sinning, yes. he died for us. Mm -hmm. He didn't say get cleaned up, yeah, and then get come right, to me. and then come to me. He, he said, no, while you're in the pit, I am going to die for you because I love you. That's right. <clears throat> There's no greater love than that. So he, he's got, to, he's my hero. He's, yes. He's, uh, He's the man. What do you tell people that, you know, I'm sure you've had people, especially when you're in the jail ministry, when someone asks you, and this may be really putting you on the spot, because I know this could be a tough question to answer, but <clears throat> why has this happened to me? When someone's just, when someone, when something's been through something horrible, abuse of some kind, some devastation or loss, and they ask you, what kind of God would allow this? How do you answer that? That is a good question. Um, it's not that God, uh, well, it, God is a sovereign God, mm -hmm. so he, he is ultimately in control of, of everything that does happen. Mm -hmm. Some things happen because of free will. Yes. Uh, the people, we all have free will. Yes. So when bad things happen, it can, you know, it's not that God is condoning it or, uh, well, I I mean, he obviously he's allowing it to happen. But he didn't but, make it happen. But he didn't he's, make it happen. Allowing, it wasn't yeah. because of his action that it happened. Right, right. So that's a lot of it, you know. Our free will gets gets in in there, and uh, even though we think that we're in control, uh, my pastor just told this story um, about God's sovereignty just this last Sunday. Go ahead. You know, he he's getting on a plane in in in, in New York. Uh, John F. Kennedy Airport or somewhere gone his way to Israel and right before the cabin door closes a fly flies in to the plane and they close the door so the fly is now on the plane so he's watching this fly throughout the whole flight you know six seven hours later they land in Tel Aviv Israel and the door opens and the fly flies out of the plane and you know the fly is from New York he knows the fly knows where everything is in New York where he <laughs> left and now He's in Tel Aviv and he flies out of the plane. He doesn't know where anything's at, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that fly, he thought he was in control of everything that he, that he was doing until he got on this plane when really that's kind of a picture of God's sovereignty. This tube, all these people are in this plane, but they're not really in control of the plane. The pilot is, right? Mm -hmm. Where the pilot's taking them. So God is outside of of our time. That's right. He's the beginning, he's the end. Yes. He sees it all at once. That's right. That's it's so hard to wrap your mind around that. Yeah, I love it is. that. It's hard to wrap you your know? mind around yeah. it, but that's how God sees things. He knows where you're gonna end up. He knows where you began. 
He knew you before when you were in your mother's womb. What kind of a church do you go to? Assemblies of God. Okay, Assemblies of God. Okay. So, um, you know, I know the, the, um, there's a different uh, fathers of our faith. You know, we have John Wesley and Calvin and all these different, mm -hmm. um, you know, because what you said kind of talking about, um, I don't want to break it down too theological here, but, you know, the, uh, predestination and things like that, that we're predestined. You know, our um, church, we don't believe in predestination because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, if, if you're predestined to not be a believer, then what's the point of me going out? And you know what I'm saying? It's so interesting you're bringing this up because yeah. Robin and I were just talking about this mm -hmm. yesterday because mm -hmm. she's taking a theology class right now in, in her master's mm -hmm. and they were talking about this on a conference call yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you know, th I... My feeling on that is that's not something that's going to make a difference as to whether you're saved or not. Exactly. Whether you believe that or not. Right, exactly. Uh, but uh, I, I kind of tend to think that, you know, God's desire is not to lose anybody, mm -hmm. to yes. save us all. Yes. So yes, that's his heart. That's mm -hmm. his heart. So mm -hmm. I think we all have the opportunity to be, to, to be saved, but we have that free will. Yes. We have to choose to... Yes to re not only believe in, in Christ, but receive Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference because the devil believes in Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. But So we need to not only believe, we need to receive Christ into our hearts. Yes. Yes. And so, yeah, so the predestination and and Yeah, those are, we can go down, yes. and, you know, that's We can go down those roads, and I'm certainly not an expert in that myself. It's but quite, it's, it's deep interesting. I love to think about stuff. that. I, love to, I, I do love to explore and, that, yeah. yeah. When, when you go to school, you'll yeah, learn about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting that, on, I told you, on Thursday. Yeah. Theology class, I'm really excited. Theology, yeah. Um, but, you know, just getting back to God's love, you know, He, uh, His love redeems, you know, He's the Redeemer, and His love um, is perfect. And if you look at the Bible, I like to say that the Bible is the greatest love story of all time, it you know? Is. I mean, it's a total, if you look at all the stories, it's all about, you know, God's pursuing of us, His relentless. Coming to the rescue, no yes, matter what yes. we were doing, no matter how much we sin. You know, the Jews, uh, during the wanderings in the desert, uh, you know, they, 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 they kept turning away from God, and mm -hmm. then God sent a deliverer, and then they'd turn away again, yeah. and he yeah. sent another deliverer. It's a great the picture judges, of human nature. The judges, mm -hmm. you know, all mm -hmm. the Samsons and, uh, and all that stuff, yeah. Ruth. So, yeah, he, he loves us, mm -hmm. and the plan always was to redeem us mm -hmm. through His Son, Jesus yes. Christ, yes. to make Amen. a way for all of us. But you know, and there's a scripture I like to use with people, too, that are hurting, and that's Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things God works together for the good, good. for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Yes. But, you know, that can be misleading, too, because we automatically think that whatever situation or hurt we're in, that God's going to make it good, and He does. But that good may not be until we're with Him. Oh, you know what? I, I, your question a little while back about why do we go through, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you didn't say it quite like that, but I believe that, you know, we, we go through trials and tribulations and suffering even to some extent yes. because... God's trying to teach us something. Yes, We're supposed yes. to learn something from yes, that yes. so mm -hmm. we can move on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, until we learn whatever it is we're supposed to learn, we'll keep going through mm -hmm. these trials and these tribulations. So, so for me, I mean, because there's consequences for our actions. Yes, yes. So I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have any more consequences, bad consequences for my mm -hmm, actions. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I want to try and do things right the first time now instead of be, instead of going through this process of making all these mistakes. Well, I love the scripture that says, when Jesus says, those who would come after me must daily pick up their cross yeah. and follow me. Yeah. Deny, no, must, they, deny, must deny themselves. themselves. Pick up their cross and, and follow, follow me. me. And yeah. that cross can be suffering, absolutely. Jesus doesn't, they, he didn't say we wouldn't suffer. We will suffer. He was persecuted, so why wouldn't we be persecuted? Yes, exactly. But even in the persecution, there's hope. You know, and I was just thinking about this yesterday. You know, I had some irritation at home with the kids or, you know, just family stuff, whatever. You know, they weren't listening or something, you know. And, and in my flesh, my reaction can be to lash out and, and get angry or irritated. Yeah, mm -hmm. But that's, that. you know, it's like the Lord is showing me how to put my peace, how to put my hope in Him in the moment, whatever I'm going through, to not put my 
you know, because I felt like I lost my peace, you know, it's just like yeah. irritated, and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And if I can just, in those times, really focus on Him and communication with Him and let Him be my peace and not not let the world rob me of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And it's, it's a journey. That's a journey, you know? That's, I've learned that the, the best thing for me to do when I want start to get agitated is to turn it over to him right yeah. then there. Lord, yeah. I, I'm not liking this. I yeah. people that, can you please take it from me? Strike can you do, can you do Strike, something about this? Strike my kids down. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. That's, that's what I've learned to do, and, and that works real well for me. Yeah, Because then exactly. I don't stay too agitated too long. Exactly. I think that as we grow, as we grow you as do we, that, yeah. yeah, you do that more, more and more, more easily. Yeah, because much more easier. And more quickly. You know? Because you learn that that's yeah. the best way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because God has got it. He, he's in control. He's sovereign. Yeah. And I think the, the, the fruit of or the uh, measure of one measure of our growing in our grace and in our relationship with Him in maturity, as you said earlier, is that we just we go to the cross that much quicker. Like I just said, that's like, because when you're first starting out, you know, you, it's like you're convicted of something, you realize, oh, that wasn't right, I should love that person, and but maybe it takes you a long time as you wrestle with your pride and that, and it takes you longer to, to admit and to go to Jesus and give it to Him. Yeah. But as you're growing, you just tend to do that more and more quickly. Yes. You know, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's part of that that maturation process yeah. is to uh, is to know it, it, to become more like Christ. We need to start acting more, more like Christ in all situations, not just the ones we like. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Uh, and that's a little harder to do. But as time goes on, you, I know for me, I see that that works really well. It does. Good. It, it gives me a lot of peace. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm at peace. 99% of the time. Once in a while, I lose it. Yeah. Good. Okay. On that note, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to the final segment of Love, Hope, and Faith. And before I continue this interview, I want to remind you of a couple of ways you can view other episodes. The TSPNTV.com website is a great website that has all the Amador County headlines and pro the other shows here on TSPN, as well as information around our county. It's a great resource, TSPNTV.com. Also, you can go to HeatherMurdoch.com. That's my blog where I share the show, as well as I like to write encouragements and to share my journey through writing. I love to write. So you can also so check it check out other episodes there as well and uh, getting back to you Steve I want to share with you a verse I read this morning as I said I'm reading in Thessalonians but mm -hmm. my verse of the day on my Bible app was out of John it says Jesus replied if anyone loves me he will obey my teaching my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him I love that picture he who does not love me will not obey my teaching these words you hear are not my own they belong to the father who sent me all this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. I have said to you, he's going to remind us of everything he said to us, I love that, the mm. teacher, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I love that. I love that Jesus went to leave with us the Holy Spirit, our counselor, our friend, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. our teacher, yeah. um, our, our confidant, all those things. But talking about the Holy Spirit, I know you go to the Assembly of God Church. So I want to talk a little bit about, about your church experience and your experience with the Holy Spirit. And it's, okay. We kind of talked about tongues, speaking in tongues a little bit. Yeah. Tell me your experience with that. Uh, it, it's interesting because I came from a church... It didn't really, they didn't practice that, and they, it was a reformed church, so I don't believe they, I know they, they don't really believe in that mm -hmm. anymore. Well, the Assemblies of God, which is where I've been for a few, well, almost three years now, um, they believe that the first evidence of being baptized with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. And tell us what that is for viewers who may not know. What is it, speaking in tongues? It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual language that, that really doesn't, it's a language between the Holy Spirit's talking to, to the Father and the Son, and, and it's a communication that there are people that have the gift of interpreting those mm -hmm. tongues, mm -hmm. um, but just speaking in tongues, it's not something that you would understand. It's, it's a language. It's an angelic language. It's like a prayer language. A prayer language, uh -huh. angelic type okay. language. Okay, okay. So anyway, uh, so when I went to work at, at this church, I'm probably going to get in trouble for my pastor for saying this, or maybe I won't, but because uh, I don't think he knew this at the time, but um, I didn't speak in tongues, so I began praying to the Lord, saying, Lord, you know, 
everyone speaking in tongues. I mean, is this for real? Is this something that, yeah. that, that I, yeah, exactly. I, I, since I don't do it, and I'm now, you know, going to a church, the denomination, this is what they believe, that that's the first evidence being baptized with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. So I, I began, I prayed about it, and within a week, we have staff meetings every week, and this old-time pastor was, was in, in the staff meeting, and at the end of the staff meeting, we always pray for prayer requests that have come in throughout the week. So we're, we're starting to do that process, and this pastor just touches me on the shoulder like this, mm -hmm. and, I, and I felt this like a electrical charge, or I don't know how to describe it, flew out, of, something flew out of him into me. Mm. And I started speaking in tongues. Right there? Right there. Oh, wow. And like, yeah, immediately. So and did you, that and made did me you a believer. Did you know what you were saying? No. No, okay. But did I someone, know it. Did someone know what you were saying? No. No, okay. No. Okay. And so now is it something that you, because I've never, I've shared with you, I've never spoken in tongues, although I've told the Lord if that's a gift he wants to give me, I'm open to that. But it hasn't happened for me yet. Um, and I don't know if it will, but I... Um, it's not a salvation issue yeah, uh, exactly. to me. So, it, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. It's just, it's a de denominational thing. They call it a second blessing. Um, is it something that you regularly do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now. Mm -hmm. Because it, uh, when you, when, when, when I don't know what to say or pray for, then that language comes out. Yeah. And it, there's prayer going on there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's controversial in you know yeah. in some it's denominations. It's interesting though. So. I'm very fascinated by it. So I I'll tell you this: you pray for it, and uh, you know, and uh, that's how I received it. But if I wasn't around people doing it, I might not have wanted to receive it. Right, so, right. So, you know, so it's, it's like Well, that. my husband and I, um, a friend of mine was, uh, he's a, an, he was an associate pastor at the time, and he was um, had an opportunity to give the message for the, his church. His, I think his senior pastor was out or something. Anyway, so he invited us to come and hear him speak because he had a really a burden for this message he wanted to give. And so we went, and it's a, um, a full gospel, I think, church in Burson. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway. Um, and so this message was given, and what he was so powerful and was just like anointed, I felt like. And of course, they're very, you know, they're an Assembly of God church as well. Or maybe Pentecostal or whatever. Anyway, and so he, um, this, so they had worship after his message, and all, my husband and I were, were, had our heads down, and we were praying together, sitting side by side. My husband, you know, he's kind of conservative, you know, mm -hmm. and, and in terms of, you know, he's like, that kind of thing is, you know, he's not as, I guess not maybe he's not as expressive as I am, yeah. you know, in his faith. And um, so all of a sudden we feel hands on our head, each of, you know, on mm -hmm. each of our heads. Mm -hmm. and, all, and I felt like this, like, trembling. And all of a sudden this woman starts speaking over us in tongues. And I have to admit, I just, you know, totally admit, as I was, had my head bowed, I started to want, I wanted to giggle. Because <laughs> I was like, a little, I felt a little awkward at first. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, didn't know what to do. And I kind of looked at my husband and he was... You know, his eyes are kind of open, like, what's going on, <laughs> you uh, know? And she continued to do it. Mm -hmm. But I must say, I did feel a peace. And, and afterwards, I went up to her. I don't, know what, I don't know what she said, but I talked to her afterwards. And, you know, she said some things that were very uh, pro prophetic. And she said some things that a few months later actually came to be. And uh, my husband actually said to me, do you remember that woman at that church? She said this to you later. When she prayed over it's a us. prophetic word. So yeah. I feel like, you know, I definitely know that it's some people have those giftings. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, I believe in that. I believe that the gifts of, that the apostles had are still around today. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and the miracles, the signs, and the wonders. And, and you know, some denominations don't believe that. Yeah. They believe it was only when the apostles died off, it, it stopped there. Yeah, yeah. I don't see that. At our mm -hmm. church, we see miracles and all the time. Yeah, although I see miracles Healings. without that, too. You know, I yeah. see miracles without the speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah. Like that, absolutely. Well, speaking in tongues, you know, in a public, it's something that should probably sh shouldn't be done in public, but if you're in a church where everyone's doing yeah. it, they tend to do that. Mm -hmm. But like if a pastor's up there, you know, I wouldn't think it'd be, it's not really right for them to be speaking in tongues while they're preaching. Right. Unless someone is there to interpret it for the right. for the congregation. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, there, there's some things, there's some, I guess I want to say guidelines, you know. I've had a couple and, of... And it's, it's biblical. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, there's, you can, look, you can look at it both ways. There's biblical evidence for that speaking in tongues, and then... Just like with everything in the Bible. Yeah, exactly. You can <laughs> yeah. believe this or you can believe mm -hmm. that. So, but yeah, but until it happened to me, 
I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have a skeptical, yes, I'll say. Yes, I hear yeah. you, I hear you. Yeah. And I've, I've had my skepticism, too. But like I said, I'm open to whatever the Lord wants to do in my life, you know. And um, But I... Um, you know, I think what I like to do with this show, you know, this show, I go to the Nazarene Church, and the Nazarene Church, to me, it's it's such an amazing uh, anointed church. I love it so much. And um, But there's also many other amazing churches, yeah. uh, Christian churches. And so I, I believe part of my mission here is to help bring together the body of believers, to share what we have in common. Because mm. I think there's so much disunity yes. with the different denominations. And yes. actually, people who don't believe, you know, comment, like, wow, how should I believe that when you as believers all believe something different? You know, so I really believe, I really want to unify the body of Christ. Amen. Even with the Catholic Church. Amen. You know, with, because we, have, we serve one God, and that's Jesus. You know, and that's what I believe in. Yeah, none of these things are issues of salvation. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, there's no reason why we can't be unified. Exactly. You know, exactly. If we want to worship a little bit different, you know. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, in my church, the worship is is probably a lot different than at well I know it's a lot different than where I came from. Yeah. It's much more conservative and 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 those spirits allowed to flow more. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people will get up and will, they'll have a prophetic word mm -hmm. and they'll speak it yes. in, in our congregation. Yes. That wouldn't happen at a at a reformed church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz they just wouldn't allow it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it, but it's none of it's, you know, it doesn't mean you're not saved or mm -hmm. you're, you're or you've got something that somebody else doesn't have. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the key thing. So, yeah. you know, yeah. that's that's how I, I look at it. Mhm. Mm yeah, good, good. Okay, well, we only have a few minutes left, actually about two minutes, and I wanted wow. to plug both of our CRs because okay. that's important. So I know mine, you can look at the camera when you do a mine. Celebrate Recovery at the Nazarene Church is on Friday nights at 6.15. Uh, at the, the fourth Friday, we have dinner and testimony. I'm actually giving my testimony at my church on the 28th. Dinner's at 5.30, uh, lessons at 6.15. And then uh, that's every Friday night. Anyone's welcome. All are welcome. Come as you are and experience the hope and healing and love and acceptance of Jesus Christ through the program. And when's yours? Monday night at 6.30 at 1921 Arena Boulevard. That's our Natoma Real Life Church campus. Yes. 6.30 to 8.30, a uh, large group. And everything happens that night. And then the Artisan Campus, 1901 Del Paso Boulevard, Friday nights at 6.30. Awesome. Awesome. Come and just experience it because what I love about CR, the beautiful picture of the kingdom because you have the little old 85-year-old church lady that's mm -hmm. struggling with some that's struggling with a hurt, maybe of a divorce or something, you know, right next to an addict, yes. <laughs> you know, right next to someone dealing with, yeah. you know, codependency. And it's such a beautiful picture of healing just of mm. all kinds of hurts. Yes, absolutely. So, it's a it's a life-saving ministry. It is. It is. Life-saving yeah. ministry. Yeah. Good. So, thank you so much for being on today. You know, I, I enjoyed myself. It was fun. It was fun. I know it you didn't fun. expect to be on today. No, so. I did in the last minute, but it was <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah, it was good. It was good. And your wife, Robin Pepper, um, she's going to be hopefully coming on soon, and you guys are going to start referring some other guests to me, so I appreciate yes. that. Yeah, yeah. good, good. And uh, we're going to we're gonna head out, and um, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Next week, I have a, a wonderful guest. I actually have a Christian author next week as my guest, and I've never met her, so I'm excited to interview her and uh, share how God's um, using and growing her writing ministry. And um, so have a blessed week, and uh, we'll see you next time. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.